Hey, it's Gary. Uh, we're up on the uh, boat affectionately known as the POS. Uh, grade, uh, about an 82, 83 Grady White, 20 foot Grady White, uh, with a Mercruiser 3.7 liter, uh, affectionately known as the 470. Uh, 170 horsepower, four cylinders. You either love them or you hate them. Most people hate them. This year, uh, our surprises are we got a starter that uh, doesn't want to crank. We got a trim pump that clicks but does not go down, and we've got a uh, shifter. This is a problem from last year that has a lot of play in it. It's not in the drive. It's not in the linkage. It's actually up at the shifter. So uh, we're going to start with the starter. I'm going to tear it out, rip it out, um, open it up, clean the thing up, put it back together, and uh, show you how you can save yourself a lot of money because uh, if it's electrical in nature with the starter. Generally, you don't have to replace them. You can just open them up and, uh, and clean them up and get them working again. So uh, uh, let's show you how to do that. Now, I don't think I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you the removal of this. There's a bolt back here which you can't get to, and I can't film it. And there's one down at the bottom which I'm not going to be able to film either. So I'll pull out the starter, and um, then we'll show you how we're going to open it up and clean the thing up. All right, we got the starter out, and now we're going to start by taking the solenoid off. Just these three little bolts here. One that it powers the uh, starter motor itself, and then one on each side to get the uh, solenoid und undone. Bend that back. Looks like it doesn't come out that easy. Oh boy. And that one is rusted in place. You know, it's never easy. I'm going to have to WD 40 it, maybe heat it a little bit because I do not want to break that bolt off. So all right, I did get this bolt in the back out, and the way I did it was I WD-40 it, I tapped on it a little bit, and then I went on there with a socket, and I just rocked it back and forth a little at a time, tightening, loosening, tightening, loosening, and eventually the loosening got better, and it worked itself out, so now it's out. The solenoid, I just had to really, the rubber was holding it up, I just had to turn it, and then it slid right out, so that's out. Uh, bolts out. Well, this bolt, this bolt's out. The other one actually fell out. I don't know what's going on with that. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean everything up inside here. You can see the brushes in here. We're going to, uh, they look pretty good. Clean the commutator up and uh, put it back together. And it should, uh, it should spin just fine after we get all the rust out of there. All right, I sprayed this up a little bit. I'm going to get in there with some screwdrivers and pry the motor apart. Oh. <laughs> that was easy. Slides out just like that. And that's the commutator I told you about. You just clean that up with a little fine sandpaper. Polish it up till it's nice and shiny. And we knock all the rust out of here. Uh, thrust washer that goes on the end. Don't lose that. And we'll clean out the rust. The brushes look pretty good. We'll just maybe hit them with a little fine sandpaper too. And uh, the thing should, should spin. should work fine. Now on the solenoid, what this thing really does is when you energize the start terminal, it creates a magnetic field. It pulls a plunger here, and it causes the pinion gear to um, to engage with the flywheel. Also, when that plunger goes in, it hits that button at the bottom of the solenoid, and when it hits that button, 
it closes the contacts across these two terminals. This one goes down to the starter motor, makes the motor spin. This one goes to the battery, so it connects the, the, uh, the motor actually right to the battery and it causes the battery to spin. When you de-energize it, the spring pushes it back, plunger gets retracted, little pin inside, uh, the pressure comes off that, opens up the contacts, and, um, and the motor stops spinning. What happens with these, if you ever get that click, click, this thing is energizing, it is pulling the plunger in, it, it's hitting the pin, usually it's hitting the pin, but the pin, uh, the, the contacts are corroded or they've been arced so much that they don't work right, and you don't get any current and the motor doesn't spin, and then you bang on it and then kind of, then it gets loosened up and it starts to work again. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open this up to get to those contacts because we did have that clicking but no no spinning. And it also could be the uh, the brushes on the, that would cause it not to spin also. But uh, I'm going to try to get this open. These are a bit of a pain because... You can't just pull this off because it's wired on the inside. You got to get these nuts off and pull this off the studs. And uh, when you go to loosen it, since there's so much rust on it, the studs want to spin. So it's kind of kind of tricky to get these off. Worst come to worst, you could just buy another solenoid for it without replacing the whole starter, but. I'm trying to save a buck on this one. Nope. Yep. <laughs> okay, one thing I wanted to add, when you take the solenoid apart, you don't have to remove the battery terminal and the R terminal just the start terminal, the S, and the one that goes down to the motor itself. Uh, you have to remove those because when you take this apart they sort of pull right out of the back. Uh, so just take those two terminals off, the nuts off that holds it um, down just like this nut is, um, is holding uh, this stud in. This one can stay, this one can stay, and these two come off. Uh, I wire wheeled this all up. I cleaned up this contact. This is the the contact that I um, that I mentioned, I cleaned that up really good. What that does is when this stud is in place and that button gets pressed down, it closes this contact, the connection across those two studs, makes the contact, sends the power down to the motor, lets the motor spin. So to put it back together, it just goes in like that, and it drops back on. Come on now. Over those two studs. And you put the two bolts back in and the two nuts on the star terminal and on the, uh, the motor terminal. And that's it. And I wire wheel the outside and we're going to paint them all up after we get everything all clean.